for coaches that's still in the playoffs. So it makes sense why nobody's been hired yet. But you also have, in addition to Matt Patricia, you also got uh, Josh Daniels. Uh, did I get his right, name right? Uh, Josh McDaniels. I call. I'm thinking the Karate Kid. I said Danielson, <laughs> but Josh McDaniels, OC of the New England Patriots. And they also got, and, and I'm sorry the name skips me for right now because I, I saw this right before I went on air, but there was a third person there talking about that possibly could be in the running for a head coaching position out of the Patriots camp. So it, it leads me to the, this question. This Belichick coaching tree, should any of us be really excited when they bring up these names? Because when they when they pulled up you know, the name Matt Patricia, you know, going from Jim Caldwell, I was I was like, OK, I'm not totally excited. Now, of course, if he comes here and changed everything around and all that stuff, yeah, I'll be excited. But at this point, I am not excited. They got Josh McDaniels rumored to go to the Indianapolis Colts. Are the Indianapolis Colts like, yay, or are they like me? Oh, OK, you know, and, and here's the reason that I say this. Now, I'm, I'm going to go through some names that has come from under the Belichick coaching tree. Because let's just be honest, the success of the Patriots have led to these coaches getting head coaching jobs. You win, especially Super Bowls. But if you win, you get a coaching job. You looked at as a guru, you looked at as a uh, specialist, you good, looked at, you know, as a genius, whatever it is, you know, but rolling with Belichick, you get some shine. So there's some there's some coaches that have come from underneath Belichick's tree. And they haven't worked out. So I'm like, why are we getting excited, you know, over these coaches at this point? You know, every coach is different, but it is what it is. It, it, that was the knock, uh, you know, on Alabama running backs, you know, because before they kind of had a few of these guys in the league. Now, like Mark Ingram, a.k.a. from Flint Town. But, um, you know, it was Sean Alexander way back when, you know, but there were guys coming into the league, you know, for Alabama that was running backs. And people were like, don't touch Alabama running backs. They're great in college. But when they get to the pros, they struggle, you know, and that's kind of how, you know, I'm like. Is that the same thing here in, 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 in under Belichick's watch, if you will, or his tenure as, as, as head coach of the New England Patriots? Shouts out to Thorny Switch, who's just jumped in the building. Um, here are some coaches. These are all people who came from uh, under Bill Belichick and went on to get head coaching jobs. Romeo Cornell. He had two head coaching jobs of so the Browns and the Chiefs. His overall record as a head coach, 28 and 55. Obviously not good. Al Groh, he did one season in the NFL. He went nine and seven. He was the Jets core, uh, head coach. We talked about Josh McDaniels. We know he, he went from, um, New England to Denver. And of course he ended back up at New England at this point, but his two seasons, he went 11 and 17. And he didn't get the benefit from, he did draft Tim Tebow, but he didn't get the benefit of watching Tebow win that, that playoff game against the Steelers because they got rid of him the year before Tebow did that. John Fox was actually the coach, you know, of that, you know, uh, Eric McGinney, the guy, you know, that a lot of New England people hate. He was the Browns and the Jets coach, 33 and 48. Bill O'Brien, current head coach of the uh, Houston, Texas, 32 and 35. You know, um, Nick Saban. Yeah, Nick Saban. But I think a lot of people forgot Nick Saban coached in the NFL for a second. But for a hot second, he was with the Dolphins. He was 15 and 17. I really don't kind of throw Nick Saban in there because uh, I just think, you know, it was maybe just a stop, you know, for him to be under Belichick. I still think he would have been what he what he was regardless. But he was under the Belichick um, umbrella. And an honorable mention goes to Jim Schwartz. And the reason I say an honorable mention for Jim Schwartz is that he coached the Lions, went 29 and 52, uh, but he wasn't a OC or a DC for Bill Belichick. He worked in a different capacity for him. So I really don't kind of throw him in that mix, but you were there. You picked up on something, you know, and, and I'm pretty sure being under, you know, being associated with Belichick. You know, help 
with with the job. I mean, there's there's no shame in that, you know. But all these guys, you know, with with exception to Al Gro, had losing records to head coaches. And then, it, as far as like playoff appearances, you got three out of that out of that entire group. Jim Schwartz, like I said, honorable mention, he went all in one. Bill O'Brien, he could change stuff around. He went one and two. And Eric McGinney, he went all in one. But none of those other guys went, you know, to the playoffs. So uh, it begs the question: Is it is it really worth getting excited when you have? Um, a disciple of Bill Belichick coming to your team. Cause at this point it hasn't worked. We're talking about Josh McDaniels. Now it, it's almost like, I'm not saying they're giving him a pass. I shouldn't say they're giving him a pass, but it's almost like, you know, they're saying, well, he learned from his first mistakes. No, I don't know if he learned from his first mistakes or not because he hasn't coached again. He may go in there and stink it up again. You know, now was he humble? I, yeah, I think he got humbled a little bit. You know, and just like, yo, you know, this is this is a little bit more or this is, you know, it's more to it than what I thought. And and he's prepared to take that on again. But it's it's like they're giving Josh McDaniel like, oh, now he got the cheat code. Now he's going to come out and be Belichick, you know. No, because we're, he's going to Indianapolis and let's all be clear. That, that's the report. So I'm just going to go ahead and say he's going. there. So he goes there. You have no idea what you're getting with Andrew Luck unless they did a secret workout and show Andrew Luck working out. But we all know Andrew Luck has had his issues and he has had his problems. Now, maybe it was the quarterback because we saw how that was with the L.A. Rams and, and how Jared Goff came out year two. That could be, you know, be it very well. But at this point, I think we need to just hold up. And, and, and just say, hey. Prove it to me. You know, uh, let me go to the chat room. Uh, that ninja saying Jelani is OK to say he's getting the pass because he is. He's getting the I don't have melanin selective memory pass. So, yes, you know. And and that ninja is right. I'm sorry. He, he's right about that. You know, he, I think he is getting a, a, a somewhat of a pass, you know, if you will. He he went. He was a head coach. He didn't do too well. He, he rubbed people a little bit wrong, and then they got rid of him. He goes back to New England. All of a sudden, he's great again. Now, let's just say you know he went back to an organization that was doing great. You know, w- without him. Now, I'm gonna say I'm not gonna say that that just all because of the organization. But yeah, you know, I think he get a little bit of a pass. You know, on it. So that ninja, I think he has you know a a, a valid point you know, on there. So, um, but I, I'm looking at this list and, it, and it's other people. I'm not going to go to the college list, you know, because that's not the NFL. You're not coaching grown men. You're not coaching, you know, uh, folks that's getting paid and they got families, you know, and all that stuff. You're coaching kids, but you know, there, there is some guys like Charlie Weiss that didn't have, you know, the, the greatest success, but Nick Saban, he went to college and we all saw him. he just won, you know, another na- national championship. So, it, 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 and, and, and I know that hurts, you know, it's because uh, of what it ha- how it happened. But, you know, it is what it is, you know, on it. So if, if the Lions do get Matt Patricia, I will give him an opportunity because, look, this is his first coaching opportunity. So give him the benefit of the doubt. But I'm not excited. Uh, and, and nor should anyone else be until they prove it. That's how that is how this whole thing should be. You have to prove it. It's great. You know, you're coming in, you got an idea and all that stuff, but I'm not going to be getting out of my chair, you know, doing the hammer time dance because we got Matt Patricia. Because until I see a change, until I see the Lions winning on a consistent basis and being a threat, that's when I will be up doing the hammer time dance going, oh, 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 oh. Yeah, I know that was cheesy, but hey, that it, it is what it is. It's honest. It's honest. That, and that's what I'm being. I'm being honest with y'all. So these these coaches, you know, that come out of Belichick's camp is not is not the Bill Walsh camp. I mean, you may get mad, but Andy Reid, yeah, he got the issues. He got a problem. But he went to five NFC championship game and a Super Bowl. Nobody has breathed that. Uh Mike Holmgren, he's been to two Super Bowls. Nobody's breathed that breathed that. 
Even Steve Mariucci, he's had success uh, coming out of Bill Walsh camp. You know, so I'm just saying it, it's well, did Mariucci come out home? No, he came, he came out of um, uh, Bill Walsh and, and, and Dennis Green. You know, he's had success. So if, if it's guys like that, yeah, I'm getting excited, but I can't get excited, you know, coming out of there. Yeah. I mean, he'll teach him everything that he knows and, you know, help him out and all that stuff. But when they get on their own, they struggle. So, but if it is Matt Patricia, I, I, I'll give him, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt, you know. Now, without a doubt, this past week has been a little bit crazy in the NBA. Yes, we're back on the NBA and I talked about how guys pumping their chest, you know, and all this stuff, and ain't nobody going to really do nothing in the NBA. And I don't know if they heard that show or something like that, but they said, well, at least this week, we're going to change that. So you got, you know, these these NBA, you know, skirmishes, and some of them is fights, and, and, and some of them, you know, potentially could have turned into brawl. So I, I, I don't know what's going on. Maybe somebody, you know, got shorted on the all-star votes or something like that, but it is going down, you know, and we had three situation in three different games uh, with either groups of players or two players. And the first one was the, the Kyle Lowry and Ben Simmons thing. They popping off at the mouth. They going at each other. They, um, they, um, you know, uh, trying to size each other up. And then I see, and, and, and everybody knows what this is. Ben Simmons, he looks at Kyle Lowry and he points the finger like back to the locker room. Like, you want to see me? And then Kyle like, hell yeah. And he takes off running. And I'm like, whoa, whoa. D- like, we really going there now? Are we really going to go there? You know, and, and, and Kyle Lowry, see, Kyle Lowry looks looks like the guy, you know, he's an NBA player, so he's not short, short. But, you know, he's a point guard, so he's shorter than a lot of guys. He's not as tall as Ben Simmons. But Kyle Lowry looked like that dude that everybody grew up with. You always had that one small dude that could really throw them hands, you know, and really didn't have a problem throwing them hands with anybody. And I don't know if Ben just got out back there and just said, you know what? You know, the moment got a hold of me, but he didn't go see Kyle, which is a good thing. There's nothing that you don't need to be fighting anyway, especially making money like that. You don't need to be just throwing money, you know, uh, out the window like that. But I do think that maybe Ben was just like, you know what? That's not me. No, 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 no. I got a little upset. But throwing hands, that no, that. But Kyle looked like he was like, man, I'm gonna take my jersey off. Probably gonna take my shorts off too, so I can get comfortable, you know? Because he took off and was like, let's go. He wanted to get back there before everybody else got back there. So I'm just like, what is going on? So I'm like, okay, you know, hey, you know, we getting middle part of the season. You know, guys may be getting a little bit frustrated. It's just one incident. Then we have the Rockets and the Clippers. Now, CP3 goes back to L.A. for the first time. And, of course, everyone's wondering how is it going to happen, you know, go down. You know, is anything, you know, uh, bad blood between him and Blake and all this stuff? And I guess it was true. You know, because they went drawing back and forth at each other. And it's amazing how they were, you know, saying nothing was going on in that camp, as they should. You know, you don't want to attract unnecessary attention. But, yeah, he, they throw, you know, throwing verbal, you know, uh, uh, threats at each other. Verbal words. I shouldn't say threats because I wasn't on the court. But verbal words that neither one of them liked. Then Trevor Ariza, who has pretty much almost gotten into it with everybody, you know, it seems. But Trevor, another guy that is about, look like he's about that life. Now they're, him and Blake get into it. Then he's saying something to, you know, uh, Austin Rivers. Austin Rivers saying, they saying he said something. Now Trevor want to holler at, you know, uh, Blake and, and Austin uh, back in the locker room and everything. And they talking about CP three knows a back door that ain't nobody seen like he Batman or something like that, that they can get in and saying Clint Capella running, you know, uh, a misdirection banging on the front door so they could get through. And now it came out that James Harden and, and, and CP three was trying to calm Ariza down, but it's like, what is going on? Like 
Fellas, I, I understand.